It's on live. We're live. Hello, everybody. Hello. We're here live at home in North Carolina. As you know, Kareem was in the camera. Kareem, come say hi. You can stand behind and say hi. He didn't want to be in the picture. But I hope you guys are having a wonderful <laughs> Saturday. Uh, <laughs> Ken, let's have some introductions. All right, so welcome. So today's topic is we're gonna just talk about what's on a lot of parents' minds is about sending the kids back to school and, and uh, talk about the process and just what is going through a typical parent's mind, which is a lot. Uh, right. Fears and frustrations and, and worries. And also to get some of the perspectives of uh, uh, young adults, especially as colleges, some of them are reopening, some are doing hybrid process, some are online and, and just trying to get like uh, just different views on the whole thing, so. Right, so we have two of the three children here, I guess Kareem didn't really wanna be here, um, but that's okay, we're gonna get two different perspectives. Hello, if you're just joining us, hello. So yeah, I'm gonna try to get us talking about what it feels like as parents here in North Carolina, getting our children ready to go back to school. But first we have Khalid. Khalid, say hi. Hello. <laughs> Khalid, how old are you? I'm 20. And Khalid is, <laughs> Khalid is a college student at UNC. Tell them what your major is, how old you are. Um, I'm majoring in biology and minoring in chemistry, and I'm gonna be a rising senior. Okay, mommy, daddy, and then Mariam, introduce yourself, how old Hi. you are. Um, I'm 18, I'm a freshman art major art major and she'll be going to the same school as Kareem, the one you saw earlier. Kareem is uh, 19, right? And Mariam's 18, yeah. So here's the thing, I guess the challenge for us as parents is obviously we're going through a pandemic and we all have strong feelings about whether it's safe for our kids to go back to school or not. Here in North Carolina, many of the schools are planning to reopen um however not all the schools will be going you know back into the classroom so Khalid tell us your example or tell us your situation uh, majority of UNC's classes are going to be made remote so students have the option of taking them online there are a couple hybrid classes but not too many so you can do all of your schooling from home okay and um you know what let me I can even move the the camera forward a little bit sorry I'll move it up a little bit to whoever's talking. So, um, Khalid, uh, were you going to take classes, you know, in the classroom and what changed? Uh, all of my classes besides one were made remote since the ending of the summer. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, since the ending of the last spring. Um, and then my most recent in-person class just got made online a couple weeks ago. Okay, so were you relieved about that or were you disappointed that you weren't going back into the classroom? What was your feelings? Uh, from a safety perspective, I thought it was better that they were made remotely and so I can kind of stay home. Okay. Um, what's one of the challenges you've had so far from remote learning versus in the classroom? Uh, it's very detached. Um, it's very robotic. You kind of see someone through a screen. Um, you don't really get to know any of your classmates per se. You're just kind of working and talking to the teacher, so. Right, I mean, but you do get to talk to your, your peers or your friends as, many, as often as you like, right? Uh, yeah, online, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, so let's see Miss Mariam's point of view. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you can see, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's fine. Okay. So Mariam, um, you're planning to start as a freshman at ECU. What's your feeling overall? I feel fine. Freshman. <laughs> um, I mean, we had, I'd been on campus, uh, with Kareem and we moved him in. And then when we went to drop off our stuff yesterday, um, the dorm room was nice. I didn't, I didn't feel any type of way. I don't know if my roommate's gonna show up. That's an interesting thing, but I feel fine. 
So you have no trepidation. That's an SAT word. <laughs> trepidation. So yeah, for you guys that don't know, um, tomorrow look out for a vlog. We'll be sharing with you our trip to the campus. We had to drop uh, Kareem and Mariam's stuff off at, on campus. And I was very anxious and nervous about that, but it actually went really smoothly. Uh, so we'll be sharing that with you on the vlog tomorrow. But you know, I'm st I still have some concerns about them starting and what will social distancing really be like if it's even possible. Um, well, I mean, yeah. So, so, so some things for the parents out there that are trying to make that decision and how to be safe is again to encourage that, you know, because it is complicated by the fact of, you know, uh, scholarships and, and financial aid packages and stuff. Many of it are, is based upon the criteria that students attend. Mm -hmm. especially housing and uh, meal plans and so forth or work study see that's the other thing well, if they're financially freshmen aid. don't get a choice we have to be on campus well it, they you do and you don't again depends upon the program mm -hmm. and yeah if it's also online so um, I know you do but, uh, for the most part also depends on the major too because if again if they're doing online and right so if you were like pre-med or if you were a math major um i wonder if you have to be on campus initially well it just depends on you yeah know, the program right. right it depends on whether you have to have hands-on yeah um or whether you can do it but, yeah but also again going back to the financial aid and stuff like that and also right. on the financing package so if they have work study see that complicates it so if they don't have work study then parents' contributions increases, there's cost factors. So each each household, there's no one size fits all. And that's right. what it is, is that, again, depends upon also transmission rates in the area. Uh, it looks at, you have to look at that uh, as well. So it's it's like, again, it's, it's balancing risks and trying to uh, right. see what's as safe as possible. So but, in light of all those things, what's important is to make sure that uh, your incoming freshman or your uh, child has as much as possible all the PPEs needed. Don't expect the institution mm -hmm. not only that to have it at a minimum, but to have enough of it. Because right. that's especially as we, we're peaking, and in some areas, if they're struggling, especially hospitals and stuff, right? They may not Let me have get the Kareem PPEs. Khaled in the picture. Sorry, right? They may not have enough of the PPEs. So, um, so you need to make sure that you have it stocked up, masks, hand sanitizers for the kids, um, a thermometer. You know, it's important that you know in some programs they require that uh, using apps that the students check in and give their uh, thermometer readings in the morning. Uh, I've seen that for some programs. Um, so I mean, I to be honest, I feel like there's a lot of things that sound good on paper, what they're gonna do, but the reality, I guess, coming at it as from a physician point of view, I personally just feel like I don't think it's safe. I don't care what they're telling us. I personally don't feel like it's safe for the kids to be back on campus, at least here in North Carolina. And again, you'll see tomorrow we take them um, and I'm smiling and we look happy, but I'm just telling you that I personally, and I, I want the other parents to chime in, let us know what you really feel and are your kids going back to school or not? Will you be homeschooling them? Will they be taping, uh, taking a gap year off or not? What are your really your honest feelings? That's what I really want to hear because I just want to share with you that I am personally not comfortable I know they're saying, yeah, take thermometers and all the kids will look out for each other and they're going to be doing their best. But I just feel like, yes, education is important, but at what cost? That's that's just my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, and I have a little bit of, of a different thought is that, you know, life is a risky proposition and it's about weighing risks and and sometimes it's, it's that's the tricky part and um again every every family is is unique and so you have to take in different factors and so uh, you know my perspective is is to um 
is to try to approach it in a nuance and that if you can mitigate the risk as much as possible, um, then, then you would proceed accordingly. So, so this is where my wife and I, we have a bit of a difference in, in perspective. And so, um, you know, nothing's guaranteed. Uh, right. Again, we look at their transmission rates and stuff. The, my, my thought process is at this point, it, it's safe enough, but once, that's why when we moved in though, we moved in light. So meaning that we didn't go in and stock up their rooms as if they're gonna be there until the end. First of all, the semester is shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then, um, you know, the semester is shorter. And, um, and so, you know, if, if, if the transmission rate starts to elevate a little bit, then, you know, they can come back home. And, and, it's, and if the school moves them to all fully online, then they can come back home. It's just that, unfortunately, a lot of their classes are, uh, especially with Miriam, are in the classroom, correct? Yeah. They're hybrid. So one, one is hybrid, the other are art classes, so you have to be in a studio right. with, a, with a teacher. Right, see, so that's the thing. So, so besides your art classes, what other classes are you taking? Sociology, uh, art history. Um, Sociology, art history, two art classes, and another is um, a lecture course, some kind of science related. Right. So, how many of them are, quote, art classes, hands on art classes? Two. two. All right. So, the majority are actually not art classes, in a sense. No, but her well, major is art. The, well, mm. like art history, that's an art class. It's just mm. online. Right, but see her again. She's she's in the school of arts, so that, so she, that's mm. her major. So not having taken her major classes, it's gonna it's gonna set her back. And it's it's, and it's fundamental. She used to take her GEs to general ed, but she has to take you know at least one or two because they're entry entry level classes. So if she doesn't take them. And she's not going to take the second second level classes, so that sets her back. Mm. So, but again, like I said, if, if if it starts to spike, and or even if there's are any even uh, one or two cases at all, um, then I, we're going to you know they're going to rapidly move into where uh, we go online, um, or you know they come back home. So. So Khalid, how, what do you feel about your brother and sister going on campus this year? What do you feel honestly? Uh, I feel a little worried, but I think they'll be fine. But it's not a matter of them, but it's more a matter of other people that they interact mm -hmm. with. So I can't, can't say control for sure. everybody else. Exactly. Yeah, no. Right, right. What would you, since you're someone that obviously has been on college campus for a while now going into your last year, what would you advise them to, to do it differently? Well, it's very hard to not uh, interact with a lot of huge crowds of people. Mm -hmm. I would say it's staying on a college campus. So I, I don't quite know how the layout of ECU is. So navigating it in this pandemic, I don't know how that would work out. For right. When I think of where people congregate in general, I wonder how cafeteria is going to be set up any differently. I mean, you know, kids go in and out of the cafeteria at random times. They don't all go to dinner or lunch or breakfast at the same time. So that's a large group of people there. Um, maybe bathrooms, not so bad, right? Um, what else, where, where else would people, well, lectures, obviously large lectures, unless the classrooms are all small I mean, now, libraries, right? Libraries, libraries, right. Open plots of land where they just like to sit out on the grass. Well, but I mean, common but, areas, yeah, but right? if you have six feet apart, I mean, the issue is not, you know, again, if you have social distancing, it, it, the more issue is to, it's really the after class, uh, you know, like right. people hanging out, in, you know, in colleges, what do they do? If you go to college town, they hang out in eateries, you know, right. bars and stuff, or, you know, stuff like that. But I mean, that's, that's not, not our case, kids, right? true. Right, that's not our kids, the bar ho no. hopping type. But I'm just really concerned that, have you ever seen where young people get together? I mean, the truth is when young people get together, or even, I wouldn't even put it on young people, when people who like each other or enjoy each other's company see each other, I don't know about you, it's like you almost forget about the social distancing or it's hard to maintain it. Um, so I just, yeah, I just, even our kids, I know they're not perfect. I just have a hard time 
knowing or thinking that they're going to be around all these kids or maybe some of their friends and they're really going to stay, you know, six to eight to ten feet apart from each other. Well, but they, see, again, this is where you and I differ a little bit is that how, how are they going to learn? They, they have to go out in the world. And I mean, you can have adults that... that this is that a really taking, high cost to learn, though, well, because the last thing we want is a sick child. I, I, well, that's the last thing anyone wants, you know, but when, again, when you have this, but you also have flu season, you also have a myriad of other issues that, uh, that go on on cam college campuses that, that can keep you up at night. Right. And this is one of them. And it, it's sort of like, you know, again, in life, it's, it, it's, it, it's about it's minimizing risk. Uh, sometimes the challenge is, is how do you live life to the fullest mm -hmm. and, and without taking risks? So it's a balancing act. And so I think that if we lead by example and say like, look, you, you gotta be safe, make wise choices. Like that's what we tell our kids. And now that they're young adults is, is that, you know, um, ultimately uh, their lives are in their hands. I mean, we do the best that we can, but um, to be responsible. And part of being a totally responsible person is to engage the world and um, make the right choices. And help and help uh, help each other as long as we provide them the tools and uh, have the faith that they're going to make the right decisions and trust them. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> because I, I'm looking in because Khalid's over there and I can't look through your mother's head, so that's why I'm looking at you. And you're all right, guys. So I don't know. We don't know how this is all going to end or take place. But again, look out for a vlog tomorrow where we share our trip. Um, unloading their stuff in their different dorms. Yeah, we'll be sharing that tomorrow. And, you know, the best case scenario in my book is that they just take all their classes online, that hopefully we just drop their stuff up and at some point we're gonna go get their stuff back and they don't have to be on campus. But I don't know, North Carolina, I don't know what the plan is. Right now, they're supposed to be going to school or starting college in well, August. Well, the plan is, 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 is per, per campus. Mm -hmm. Each school is gonna make its own determination uh, based upon uh, local risk and, and, and as well as other factors and, and also capacity and capability. Not all schools are capable of going fully 100% online. Right. And then the other thing too is also we forget it's also the instructors, the teachers. Right, the they, instructors, they don't know, want to put themselves we, at we risk, have exactly. To, we have to support our educators and provide them with the but tools. But the majority of them don't want to go back to school on campus. Anyway, can you hear this thunder and lightning out there? So we will see what will happen, but we'll be sharing with you as we go along um, this is clearly a very different year. We're all dealing with this whole pandemic. It is something else. Um, I mean, there are some, I don't want to say there are some positive things that have come out of this year, but I'm sure there are. There's some There's learning. Of positive There's stuff. some learning things that have happened and we've all learned to prioritize our life and decide no. what's really important to us and what we don't need to be wasting time with. Right. And, and, and challenges that you know they come they teach you a little bit about yourselves and, and about what's really important right you know sometimes we get so caught up in material things or the superficial that these are moments that would help us pause and be grateful i think the important thing is to be grateful for each other and for our health and and um, you know uh, those Absolutely. things yeah so no there's always plenty to be grateful you know so. Anyway, shout out to everyone who's watching us. We really appreciate all of you. And uh, yeah, drop a comment where you're watching us from. And to all the parents, uh, we understand the struggle and I really look forward to hearing your comments. We'll go back and read all the comments about what your thoughts are, what you're doing with your children. Maybe they're not in college. Maybe they're in high school or maybe they're elementary in school. elementary school. That is a big challenge. You know right there how you control uh, that situation if they're in elementary school so yeah um, but the other thing too is tomorrow's vlog we're gonna be sharing a trip we took uh, to a Jamaican restaurant so we listened you guys wanted to see us eat Jamaican food 
And so we had some amazing Jamaican food and we vlogged that. So that will be in the vlog tomorrow. So look out for some tasty Jamaican food. <laughs> right, Ken? Mm -hmm. That's right. Some, some local Jamaican food. <laughs> we had some oxtail, jerk chicken, patties, all of that. Did you like it, the food? It's fine. It was fine? It's fine. <laughs> it wasn't the same as what? The stuff in Brooklyn or no. grandparents' food, right? Not quite, but it, was, it wasn't bad. Mariam hasn't eaten any quite yet. She was full. Right. Should we tell them about your no. upcoming? No. So, <laughs> so but again, we, you know, we appreciate everyone. And again, you know, these decisions are very personal. So, you know, and, and, and unique for every family and their circumstances. So it's not about wrong or right, but it's about... Again, no, you got to do what's best, best for your, for your family, family and, for your, and kids. your situation and That's where right. you live because I'm sure yep. it's different in every state but also right. in every country. And even down to every county. So, right. again, you have to take in all the various factors and, and so forth together to try right. to find what's, what, what's best for you and your family. So, on that note, we are going to leave you. Got anything else, Boo, you want to add? Some wisdom you want to add? No. Nope. Leaving quote? Nope. <laughs> Just be good and do good. <laughs> be good and do good. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite quote, Khalid? Any quote? I don't have one. You don't have a favorite quote? No, not right now. Yeah, where's the food at? That's where's the food at? Well, my favorite quote is, uh, to do good is my religion. Right? It's, it's not quite, I didn't quite say it right. But it's, it's, it's somewhere along those lines. To do good is my religion for all of those who are always asking, what's your religion? <laughs> Mariam, do you have a favorite quote? Not really? You're not into quotes? No. All righty. So on that note, folks, we will see you later. Check out the vlog tomorrow on Sunday. Okay? Bye. Again, let's see how we turn this off. <laughs> you have to go and turn it off. <laughs> Bye.